Good evening, Norway House friends. We're so excited to welcome you to our second virtual exhibit. We are opening the Baldeshal, and we have 25 various textiles all the way from England, Canada, and the United States. And I am standing in front of a replica that is from um, loan from Westerheim, but it's the original in Oslo that you can go and see next summer at the National Museum in Oslo. So I hope you get a chance to get over there. We are taking appointments online between Tuesday and Friday. They are filling up fast, so go online and check it out, norwayhouse.org. Become a member, and we're so excited to see you here. We are taking all the precautions that we need to with masks, hand sanitizers, and gloves. So we have it all here in case you forget them at home. We're so excited to see you, but come along. I've got a special surprise to tell you. <laughs> and here I am standing in front of Lindsay Marshall's beautiful textile all the way from England. And as I mentioned, I have a special announcement. You all know we've been in a capital campaign and we're excited to break ground before year end and they have kindly donated this to our expansion. So we will be hanging it up in our new building. I wanna give a special thank you to the Baldeshal Committee, to Max Stevenson, our director of the gallery and programs, and Rachel Barnes, our event coordinator, who have put this all together, and to Robbie LaFleur and her whole team with a Norwegian textile letter. We can't thank you enough and to Borton Overseas for our financial sponsors and to all the various sponsors that have, that have made this happen. Tusen, tusen hjertelig takk. And now I'm excited to give it over to Robbie LaFleur, who's the editor of the Scandinavian Textile Letter. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the virtual opening of the new Norway house exhibit, The Baldeshol. A medieval tapestry inspires contemporary textiles. I'm Robbie LaFleur, one of the curators of this show, and I wish you were here. I wish that uh, Max, the curator, had to make a hole in the middle of all the people at the opening of this gallery, and we could raise a glass of wine, oh, and then worry about whether the wine is gonna hurt the textiles and whether they can even have it in here. But I wish you were here, but you're not, and this is the next best thing. I want to give you a little background. I'm standing in front of a replica of the Baldeshol Tapestry. It's the historic, important national treasure. It's a tapestry woven in the late 1100s in Norway, and it probably represents only two months of what would have been a very long freeze of all of the calendar months of the year. So here's the April man sowing seeds, and here's the, the military man of May, perhaps riding off to war. This is such an important tapestry that has been replicated many times. Um, Westerheim Norwegian American Museum has three copies, and this is one of them, done by Amalia Gutterson in the early part of the 1900s. There's even, a replica in, the, in a closet in the White House. It was done in 1925 and donated to President and Mrs. Coolidge. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we don't think it's ever been hung in the White House, but we know it's there. New pieces still keep turning up. Uh, someone wrote to me last week and told me about another full-size replica of this tapestry done by a Danish woman who was married to a noted African-American artist, William H. Johnson. And so this other replica is now in South Carolina. So they're all over the place. So for our new exhibit, we thought we don't need to replicate the Baldeshall Tapestry. That's been done. <laughs> you, can, you can see it right here. But instead we thought, let's take the Baldeshall and use it as inspiration. And the artist could take either the colors or the image or the thoughts of the calendar or the materials, the important spells out wool and hand dyes of that time and create a piece in their own style 
with their own creativity, with their own techniques. And the result is this marvelous, marvelous fiber exhibit that you see here today. The problems of masks. Um, a great exhibit has prizes. So we have two fabulous judges, local textile artists with national reputations, who looked at all of our 25 pieces. Well, not all of them, the, committee, the committee's pieces were not included, um, and decided on a first and second place winning piece. They'll talk to you a little bit about why they chose those pieces. So I am really happy to introduce Carolyn Halliday and Karen Searle. Hi, I'm Karen Searle. I work in many textile media from weaving to knitting to crochet to uh, lace. And I'm very excited about the variety of, of work in this show. There are many media that are interpreting this, this tapestry. There are quilts, there are felt, there's felting, there's printing, there's weaving and cooking, all kinds of things. So it's been wonderful to enjoy all of them. We were especially impressed by this piece, this banner piece here by Lindsay Marshall. It's a very finely woven tapestry and it picks up details of the Bolfishori and it a very exciting way. We, there are so many works in the show that are very impressive, um, but we singled this one out for the first award because of its unique design, its um, very fine work, and its um, excellent interpretation of the tapestry. Um, this is a finely woven tapestry and it's also a shaped piece, which is quite unusual and difficult to do. Hi, I'm Carolyn Halliday, trying to get my mask off um, in these days of COVID. I uh, am a, a local textile artist. I work predominantly with 3D and sculpture using a variety of techniques I work and larger installations and small, and in particular, use a lot of knitting of non-traditional -materi non materials. I was really happy to get to see this show in such an intimate way as to be considering what should be an award uh, for the show. Karen and I had a really tricky time trying to decide among these marvelous pieces. We were really impressed with the overall craftsmanship of all of the work and the clever and thoughtful process that went into making decisions about both how they crafted the piece and in their design and, and uh, final product. But we both agreed that this piece by Lindsay Marshall would be the winner. We were very drawn to the unique interpretation of it as a banner um, and yet how beautifully it, it uh, extracted these elements from the original Baldeschel tapestry and then executed them so precisely in uh, shape and color. And as Karen mentioned, the fineness of the weave and the intricacy of the weave is really perfect. So we're very happy to have chosen this one and congratulate Lindsay. And one other piece that, that I wanted to mention about uh, Lindsay's piece that I think is quite unusual is how much attention this piece commands for its scale. And so from way across the room with the other end of the gallery, it really jumps out with dramatic detail. And yet when you get up close, it rewards you with the tiny little detail and execution of the craft. We, um, after much deliberation, we also chose the, this embroidery as the second place winner. Um, this is by Kelsey Scoria. And it's a 
very small embroidery, small and detailed, lovely embroidery with um, elements of the Baldishal tapestry, but also elements of her own um, addition to the story because she felt that women had been left out of the story and put and added a Viking ship with some women. Okay, we debated over as I said, uh, who the first and second place winners would be. And we landed with this beautiful little embroidery, um, embroidered tapestry by Lindsay Shoja, which I, one of the things that I think is notable uh, about it is how incredibly dense and complicated it is, even though it's such a small work. It's really easy sometimes to open with the small works and there are some beautiful large and the tour de forces in this piece, in this in this exhibition, I mean. But this piece was so wonderfully detailed, and um, one of the things that we liked about it was that she actually used a medieval drop spindle in um, spinning some of the floss that she used. And as Karen said, she revamp the narration a little bit to emphasize the importance of women during that era and has a woman sailing the ship across the ocean and as she said, eventually to the White House. Um, so I think that's about it. Again, it's like it has these wonderful elements from the original Baldachill and uh, replicates a number of the colors and yet has her own uh, great interpretation. It's amazing the variety and diversity of techniques and images that have resulted in this exhibit. Um, people took often graphic elements from the old Baldachal tapestry. So in this one, notice that there are Baldachal birds. There are three marching up and one facing down. So to finish off, here are a few of the Baldachal birds. <laughs> <laughs>